Let's go to the. Uh, what do you think of my penguin? Is that good? Do that sound like a penguin? Like, you know, we should get like the 1966 Batman's voice. That like, cat is a drop. But or we get this one, Colin Farrell going, "Hey, it's easy, sweetheart." Hey. And that's how we start this. Hey, what? Whatever, you know. Hey, whatever. God. Hey, hey. You think you deserve? You don't. You don't think I'm fucking sorry for what I did to you? Oh, woo! Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank good. You. That was good. God, I love his accent in this movie, this show so much. You think he deserved to die like that? I like that he has an hey. Irish uh, sweatband. Hey, Irish flag sweatband when he's uh, the scene that. in the bathroom. You think that's how he deserved to die alone in the projects? Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck the system. You got everything you wanted. This is how you feel. They don't give a shit about you. Oh, God, he's so fucking good. Can we just say it right now at the start? Colin Farrell is acting his fucking ass off in this show, and it's so damn good. I can't. How is this show this good, man? I don't fucking get it. <laughs> but it's so good. So can we like talk crying, about, uh, we're going to talk about the Penguin. Right now we are. Um, yes. Spoilers all about. We have been talking about. Look, what are you, hey, hey, what are you talking huh? about? Let's not. We'll have another Batman related project <laughs> after this to talk about, by the way. Really? Joker of Oh, God. Do oh. you want to get that out of the way? I'm going to do it after Penguin. Okay. Um, <coughs> theories. <coughs> theories. Oh, shoot. Go for it. I have a theory. Because it's clear, I know we're jumping. I know I'm jumping. Yeah, if you don't know by now, 171, we jump around. But the up next on Penguin is clearly going to be a... Like flashback of to, what happened to her in Arkham. To, right, yeah. or how she got there. Sophia in Arkham, yeah. Right, okay. I'll bet you 10 bucks right now. Cool, buddy. I think I know where you're going, and I'm getting foamed up. Alberto was the hangman. Oh, you're going a different direction All than I thought. along. Oh. That's why she's pissed, because that's why it looks like she didn't really do anything, why she's confused and everything. That's why that he visits makes her sense. every week or every That's day. why she's not like... Maybe that's why she's like... I think she knew... That's why I think she knew that Penguin killed him, and she didn't ever... Hmm. That's interesting. I'll say this about it. It is really reaching. As far as theories go, because... Oh, but you want to know what theory I have by watching this episode? Okay. I the do. mushrooms? Fear toxin. I think they're setting up Scarecrow. I, when, I think Bliss is going to turn into fear toxin. I thought um, when they were going in and they started talking to those guys, uh, when they first got there, just her yeah. and him, I could have sworn I was thinking that it had something to do with Scarecrow. It had to be, right? Because it was coming in from Arkham. Yes, yes. And... That was why I was thinking uh-huh. like, it was Arkham City oh, Hospital. I'm like, is it that could, fucking Jonathan so, fucking Crane, so dude? Can I also say this? I guarantee you it's not, and it's just a very clever bait and switch. Right. And it's like, okay, you think it's going to be Fear Toxin, but it's actually this new thing. Or I'm, f- I also think that the sec- like maybe the plot to Batman Part 2 is that that gets tweaked and it turns into the Fear Toxin. But I honestly, it's probably the, fr- the, the former than the latter. I think it was just a clever little bait and switch. Yeah. For guys like me. And you know what? And me. And you know what? I fucking appreciated it. Because I thought I knew where it was going and it goes this other way. I was like, okay, cool. And because I, dude, as soon as I saw the Arkham and I was like, wait a minute. He said this was bigger than drops. This was going to change the game. And I'm like, it's fucking fear toxin. Was she talking to Crane at Arkham? And then like, so I start to spin these ideas and it's like, oh, it's this thing. It's bliss. So I'm like, I'm, Honestly, I would hope it's Bliss because I want to see, like the Penguin, if you're going to do characters, the rogues gallery, try and do characters that haven't either A, haven't been done, or B, like they did with the first movie, iterate on the character again after it's been so long. So if the rumors are true that this is leaning towards Mr. Freeze and shit, cool. But quite honestly... I want Penguin to be the big bad. I love him too much. Yeah. I want him to be... I, I love him so much, I, I can't wait for Battenson to beat the shit out of him. I keep saying that every episode. Um, 
And so I'm glad it wasn't the fear toxin, and I'm, and, and I'm glad they're going a different way. Yeah. I think it was really like, oh my God. The PTSD so, part. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I want to talk about that because that making this a Victor kind of, or like Victor's point of view, getting to see someone have those events of that first movie happen on a ground level was fucking tragic and it crazy. Took, it took me until the explosion started for me to realize that this was like a flashback. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, right. And again, that, that goes to a testament of the, of the narrative because it's only a week after this has happened. So it makes sense that that feels so fresh and like, it just like, anyway. Um. So yeah, that happens and we get to see what happened. Like he lost his family to the flooding. He lost his family to, to the Riddler shit. We don't know if his girlfriend's there. We find out later she's alive and whatever. I really liked but, that, uh, the way that they integrated when they first moved for him from the club into the city it looked really really like the effect looked really bad but that was the only time every other part of that whole montage was just oh on point so where to, they so when the he dancers, spills the drugs on the floor in the dance club were they and, the dancers but then they have all the little people so the clacking of the drugs the sound like the rocks and like causes that fucking that 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 PTSD. The, well, he the, starts it, hearing the, the explosions from the base. Yeah, first. the base. Yeah, and, and so yeah, he starts to have a panic attack, and that moment, it's like fuck, man, that's so well done, and it it makes you like, and like they say in the post show stuff, like he he is the the heart of the show, because <laughs> you see it more. You see it in this episode as well. Of like these are Penguin and Victor found each other because. They were two lonely people, and they found companionship in each other yep. because they're two lonely, broken men. And it's like, there's a little bit, if you could ignore the violent crimes that they commit, it's kind of sweet. I want to see <laughs> VD get his. Oh, the dude who plays him, Elias, uh, I can't think of his last name. Uh, that dude is so good at being I a fuck. I was Michael Kelly. Michael Kelly? I thought it was a lie. Or I might be thinking of a different dude. I probably, you know what? I probably uh, yeah. You fuck. That dude is great at being a dickhead. He is so We're good. A- oh, the scene with him and Sophia when he runs into her. Yeah. And he says, "Go, You're to, so- go to Italy, or that's where I tell people." Damn it, man! I'm sorry. I was building to it. Uh, you can keep going though. Oh, you talking about me fucking stomping shit? Over here, like a goddamn kaiju stomping on a building. That's wow, m- that's wow, me. Wow, I'm the building. Hey, hey, Godzilla. Anyway, uh, well, it's Michael Kelly. I'm sorry, you looked that up. Thank you. Well, he's been in a lot of stuff. Well, I'm thinking of a different dude, but uh, yeah, he's he's great at being an asshole. Uh, I love him in this, but yeah, the whole th- exchange where he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" When he tells you to go to Italy, you go to Italy. Yeah, and then yeah, the, he ends it with, "You either go there, I tell people that's where you went." But then, then they catch him. Oh, so that whole exchange was great because, but in that moment, we get more of because Victor's at this point convinced he's going to go run away with his girlfriend, mm-hmm. but we have this moment of a almost fatherly thing with Oz of like. Being like, tell me about your family. I want to know more about you. I believe in you. I he stands up for him with the waiter. Which oh, and I gotta say, didn't do that much is being is being much of because he's he, the waiter did nothing wrong in my opinion, and I'm sure most people that stuttered probably didn't think that he even says Victor says you didn't need to do that. But I love the fact. But no, I love that because that is still Oz being like be fucking assertive. You know what? Make him wait. If you gotta take, take up space, take up space. You own your space, and if you want to make him wait, make him fucking wait. And in a in a in his own way, that's a nice gesture. But yeah, the dad didn't do anything wrong. Um, and the then dad, you mean penguin? No, the server didn't do anything. wrong. Oh, the guy, yeah, yeah. But like, no, yeah, penguin didn't kill a bunch of people and do all this stuff. Nah, I I, I was I was really confused uh, when he was on John Beatty. I was like, does he have a knife? I thought he was gonna give him a, um, a you know, a, a smile. I thought he had a knife in his. I mouth. thought it I was thought the phone. He wouldn't be too stupid enough to kill him. Right. That's what I was thinking. Is that he was trying to get the penguin to do it? Because I think he knows that he killed Alberto too. But anyway, uh, 
Yeah, maybe. I think he's trying to provoke him for sure. Uh, obviously, because he kept saying that shit. But then, like, because then he's fucked. Yeah, because if he kills the underboss, he's dead. The number two to the head of the family. Um, but uh, the well, that whole exchange going into that. So they try to set up the thing where like, well, we got this new drug. It's bliss. This is what. And I thought this Alberto's plan. He's like, yeah, I thought you did. Which is why I could see your theory that he was the hangman. Anyway, it's clear uh, to me there's something not, that whether, she didn't kill somebody. Like I don't think, yeah. Whether true or not, I don't doubt that she has the capacity to kill somebody. But whether it's true or not, they're clearly spinning the way they're spinning the audience towards, "Hey, she didn't do all this shit. That's why she's pissed." That's why she looks so confused in the next episode about everything when they're trying to ask her how and, many more and all that. And it's intentionally deceptive, storytelling-wise, because they're all fucking liars. They all cheat and lie and steal, so you can't trust anything any of these characters are saying each other in front of each other unless you see it with your own eyes. And so we don't necessarily... Like, and we don't know what happened. We just know that Oz fucked her over, and he said as much. And he's like, I don't apologize for getting what I got, but I, it is wrong that I fucked you over. And so, like, there's there's a bunch of stuff that, that I love, and it's such good storytelling and world building that we it, this world feels so lived in and so believable yeah. that at some point, he, he... and Oh, the beauty of it where... Just, I think it was, was it this episode or the last episode where he talked about being a driver... I almost hit a sound button. That's why Tyler's like, "That's okay." But um, we talked about being a driver, and then that gets another that gets paid off again in this episode, where she even says that he's not telling the full truth because does he tell you that he was my driver? You know what I mean? And I just I fucking love that. You can never trust what any of them say, mm -hmm. and it makes sense because they're all fucking criminals, and they they're all drug you know like they're all shitty criminal like uh, mob bosses well they're all trying to fuck over you yeah for they the don't piece, give a shit get yours i want my money and then he's like oh i didn't mention your salary because he's a grand i want to yeah another uh, fun moment is like oh gotham corrupt cop cool or he's like he gets pulled he gets the cop come by because he's parked in a I tow got pulled zone. over in your town a week ago and i gotta be honest i felt for the kid although i'm not brown and also, I don't have a fucking bag of drugs. Didn't have a bag of drugs in my back seat, and you know, yeah, you also other, didn't commit other crimes. I'm with not, that, yeah, with that vehicle. <laughs> I'm not, you know, having to get out of my. But no, car. it's always scary when a cop pulls you over. I think so, in some level. But there's, there's a level, regardless of, fear, of yeah. whether you believe that or not. The fact is, is yeah, if I get pulled over, I, I. No matter, no matter if you didn't even I commit, am white, so it'll probably be go a lot. It doesn't better even than matter if I wasn't. If you committed a crime or not, you see those lights, you get nervous because you think, what did I do? I Especially gonna, when you didn't do anything. Am I going to get a ticket? Am I going to get shot? I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, anyway. Moving on. Uh, I mean, unless I'm acting like a complete idiot, I don't have any reason to be shot, but you know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm white. Uh, anyway. <laughs> did I say that too loud? No, I mean, look. But he, so, like, oh, open and close. Can we just talk about Whether that? Whether you believe it or not, can we not, just talk about the that fact scene? Fact is, is that it's Jake and I are awake, uh, are white, and <laughs> it, and that uh, interactions with cops are probably statistically going to be better in our case than if we were not. Yeah, that is all we're saying. That's to, it, and we're done with that subject. And we've let's said move it before. On, okay, it's nothing new. But what I was trying to get at. Was, I don't like it anymore. It's than relatable. You. It's a relatable scene. But I, but we also think that it's it's nervous everybody for anybody. Uh, yeah, I feel like really need to say it, but you gotta do it because the god dang free speech police. Um, I, am, I, I am okay with um, no, I don't mind like uh, explaining what I was saying. No, but the scene was great because in that moment where he he actually we have a great example of him finally thinking on his feet in a good way, mm -hmm. and going on his instincts. That he's a dirty cop because most cops in Gotham are dirty. Anyway, he's just like, mm -hmm. what do you mean money? I don't have any money. So you and I And are so the cop pockets the grand that mm -hmm. the penguin gave him. Are you and I day. okay? Uh, now, some people, when these types of episodes or when these types of shows are on, um, there is the occasional, it, it it's not a filler episode, but there's an occasional flashback episode. Mm-hmm. 
We are clearly getting one of those. Yeah. Um, I really hope it's not that, and they kind of do what they did with this episode and kind of weave between, I hope. Here's something that really <laughs> uh, really gets me, is Kristen Milioti does not sound in real life anything like Sophie Fal- Sophia Falco. Like, she's clearly doing, like, she's raised her voice a bit, and she's she's doing more of a Jersey type, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, Penguin, they're definitely doing a, like, Gotham is New York. Well, if you watch the end of the episode things, when she talks, she, her voice is a lot more, lo- is a lot, not a lot lower, but it's it's more refined. Yeah. And I was shocked. I was like. You know what she, else? She, honestly, she looks like she would talk like that. You know what else is crazy? <laughs> Colin Farrell's Irish. <laughs> I knew that. I know. I'm just being a turd. Um, but no, I go to show talk you. about Matt Can Reeves. We, I, I'm sorry. I cannot stress that enough of how funny and good his fucking accent is, considering that he's Irish. Yeah. And like he's doing a he's doing a fucking New York. How many fucking prosthetics again in his mouth alone? You know. Yeah. And I'm I'm like you. I'm still interested to see how he gets how he got his why his face looks like that and why he has the club foot. We'll know. see. I think more explanation on that. Um, but speaking of. Moving on to living the gimmick, Matt Reeves. You were telling so me. So I, I texted you and I said we got to talk about this guy H- on the air. HBO does the do behind a, the episode right. shit, and he's an executive producer, and he looks like fucking Commissioner Gordon without the glasses. He does. He's got the haircut, the mustache, and, the and trench coat, the, the Gary tie. Old, the Gary Oldman, James Gordon, yes. James Gordon, it's very yes, least. without the glasses, right? Yeah, yeah. And you said guy was born to make Batman. I'm like, hold the fuck on, man. Man. No, nobody's no. He might have been born to make Batman, but the fact that he looks like James Gordon is a lot of conscious effort on his part. You can't tell me that he started wearing trench coats and was like, you know, it looks good under trench coats, suit with a tie, and then started thinking, you know, what looks good with that, a short a haircut. You know, what looks good with that, a muzz. You can't tell you know me. It would look good right? to me if it looked like a. Cat. You can't tell me it was at all an accident that he looks like. He looks James like he Gordon walked off the set, fucking of Tombstone. Dude. I'll meet you at noon. I know that's not how he sounds, but that's how he sounds in my head. <laughs> uh, but I was saying, I just thought it was funny because you're like, he was born. I'm like, no, no, no. He's made a whole bunch of conscious decisions to get where he's at, man. Man. Nobody's born with a sweet stash and a trench coat, man. Sorry, I keep hitting you. I keep stretching my foot. Trying to... I'm not trying to play footsie with you. This, this card table ain't big enough for the two of us. I um I forgot my dog's down here. Uh I think I I you know and even with it, if it is just a flashback episode I think I'll be fine with it because it's Me it's, too. it's Me still too. interesting. Me too. But man, I just I I I hate the trend that we are in TV where like we have to have that stopgap flashback episode. Look, all I gotta and say I just... is there was there was one of the first uh, of these types of shows that we got was Daredevil. Yeah, back in the day on Netflix, and, and there, there were some filler episodes. There, yes, but they had like what 13, 20, yeah, yeah, thirteen 12, episodes. Fucking shut up. Arrow was in Flash for like twenty two. Yeah, they were regular season shows. They like were there like, were sitcoms. I'm like, what the fuck? No, right? Oh uh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there was an episode uh, very clearly of the Daredevil show that was basically a Kingpin origin episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it starred one of the, his dad. And that was a great episode. His dad was one of the guys who was in The Wire. Dude, The Wire, which you still haven't watched. Dude, season three, there's a whole flashback episode of Bullseye's origin, and it's black and white, and it's like Leave It to Beaver, and it's fucking genius. It's great. I'm not saying they're. I'm not against him. I, I, like I said before, anything, whether I, I bitch about prequels or I bitch about flashback episodes, anything like that, make no mistake, if the story is good, I will not give a shit and enjoy it. Do you remember <laughs> how bad Iron Fist was? Guess what? Guess what? Furiosa was a prequel, and I fucking love that movie. Do you so, remember, Do you remember how bad Iron Fist was? I didn't even watch it. I watched uh, the first. Like, I watched like episodes. five episodes of Luke Cage, and then they killed off Mahershala Ali. Mahershala, I can't say his fucking name. Mahershala Ali. They killed his character off. I'm like, well, that's stupid as shit. So I stopped watching that show, and then I watched Defenders, and I'm like, 
Defenders. Was not very <sighs> wow, good. Deadpool or De- uh, Daredevil is carrying a lot of weight here. Clearly, head and shoulders. Jessica Jones wasn't bad, but Jessica Jones season one is still one phenomenal. of the top. Didn't finish season two. I didn't either. I couldn't care. Off panel, off job here with Jake and Tyler. 